Welcome to Christchurch St Albans this morning. It's Sunday the 11th of October 2020 and I'm the vicar. And as we uh, approach God this morning, we're going to sing a wonderful hymn, uh, praying, crying out to God, praying for renewal in his church and renewal in our lives by the Spirit. O breath of life, come breathing through us. themes this morning is to reflect on the cross itself, the main Christian symbol uh, throughout history, throughout the common era. And this particular cross from Belize, Belize, a particular wood that you get in Belize, Central America, is uh, empty. Uh, and so the cross both symbolises death and resurrection. Christ is no longer on the cross. But central to the gospel central to what we preach and what we share is what Christ has done by passing through the uh, trauma of the cross and coming out the other side. And as we come to confess our sins, I want us to just be able to rejoice that little bit more in Christ's self-sacrificial gift, the, the wonderful gift of his love for us. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks. But to those whom God has called, he is Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Let us pray. And I'm going to say the confession line by line, and you just repeat it out loud or quietly in your hearts. My God, for love of you, 
I desire to hate and forsake all sins by which I have ever displeased you. And I resolve by the help of your grace to commit them no more and to avoid all opportunities of sin. Help me to do this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And St. Peter writes, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we confess our sins, we can uh, receive his forgiveness. We are returning, we have returned. We will return to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. By his wounds we have been healed. So as we as we sing now, and two delightful delightful songs which help us draw near to him in worship, just return as you will to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is my day. 
In those recordings, our musicians have guided us skillfully into the presence of God. That yearning to be with God and the, the hunger for him and the learning that in the waiting we encounter the Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us, sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, bearing our sins, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. We are going to continue meditating on the cross now. <clears throat> so we're going to be listening to a song sung by um, our musicians, Maria and Malcolm. And um, it's, a, it's a cross themed song. And over that, I've simply um, done a very ordinary, but um, uh, just a, a video of various different crosses that I have in my possession. Um, just so try and put the words to the crosses and afterwards when we come out of that we'll have an opportunity just to pray some prayers of intercession together. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you
the death of Christ is the doorway to new life, to a different way of living. It is the journey from darkness to light. It is the victory over sin and death and all the powers of darkness that range against us and all humanity. The cross is amazing. It demonstrates the depth of the love of God for his creation. Jesus gives everything on behalf of the Father. There is nothing more that he can give and he does it for you. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we respond personally to the depth of your love for us. Almost beyond comprehension, lead us through that door that we might live in your love, not be afraid of your love, not deny your love, but rejoice in it with all humility. We pray that your love will reach the ends of the earth, that people's hearts might be stirred, that they might be strangely warmed, that people we know who are hard-hearted and difficult and weighed down by sin and guilt or shame. We pray that you would melt them, that they may begin to understand that there is something beyond this life which is full of radiant love evidenced in the cross, dealt with in the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that those who are facing death, literally or symbolically today, would find a doorway into life. We pray for those who are ill and being um, cared for and looked after. We pray for those who are alone. We pray for those whose hearts are at peace and for those whose hearts are troubled. We pray for those who are being killed this day for their beliefs, for their crimes. because they belong to the wrong family or the wrong religion. We pray for them that a doorway would open that no one can shut. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in our pandemic world, We pray that your cross would stand firm and faithful and true as it has done for 2,000 years. We pray that we might trust you, Lord, that you have done everything that's needed to guide us safe through to the other side. That even as we contemplate our own mortality, we know that all will be well because of the cross. And we pray for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, for those around us, for our neighbours, that they too may trust in the cross. In Jesus' name, Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is ahead, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm now happy to hand over to Iyabo, who's talking about, um, she's going to read a psalm to us and also talk, talk from that psalm on our, 
theme which concerns, and our other theme which concerns living in a world um, of isolation. How do we cope with a post-COVID world that's um, uh, for, for which isolation seems somewhat of a more uh, of a norm. Our Bible reading is taken from Psalm 13, a Psalm of David. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? and day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we return to our series our walk with God in a post-COVID world. And our topic for today is isolation, loneliness, and lack of worshipping together. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you very much for your great love for us. We pray that you speak to us from your word today. We ask that you touch our lives and change us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may really be who you want each one of us to be, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, isolation and loneliness has been forced upon so many of us in one way or another, thanks to COVID-19. The opportunity to worship together, whether in church or to learn more about the Lord, from home groups or through the seniors meeting twice a month was all stripped away. And all that came very suddenly. This came on in such a way that fear gripped the hearts of so many people, especially when people began to die in large numbers. For people who were already lonely before the coronavirus outbreak, we see that the lockdown merely aggravated the situation for them. Even now, with no normal, no real normal in sight, the situation keeps changing on a daily basis. We can just thank God for each day. Our protection masks impair our communication, making us ever so aware that we are meant to be cut off one from the other. We miss our normal interaction, but even though the guidelines may stipulate that we shield and stay home, thank God they don't stop us from calling upon God. Loneliness is a negative feeling that makes one feel a loss of a sense of intimacy or belonging, coupled with, feel with feelings of uh, abandonment or isolation. For some couples, COVID-19 exposed concealed alienation. Prior to the pandemic, the work and the pub provided avenues to let off steam outside home. But with the lockdown, they became like two strangers forced together within their house. In some cases, this actually led to aggression or physical abuse. If that is your situation, perhaps the book of Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 would help. It's probably time to reflect on where you have gone wrong and what you need to change. Of course, you cannot do it by yourself. So pray together 
that God would help you to build your relationship. It is remarkable that in the book of Genesis, the account often repeats, especially at the beginning, and God saw that it was good or that it was very good. Until we come to Genesis 2, chapter 18. That's the first time God says, it is not good. And this is in relation to the loneliness of Adam. So God proceeded to create Eve a mate for him. That's the suitable mate God gave him. God made us to be sociable creatures. And that's why we have families. We have the communities. We have friends. We have churches. Every human soul longs for the human connection. Sadly, some people are still lonely, even among other Christians. God wants us to interact in harmony, and so that loneliness should not be a feature that grips us or holds on to our lives. Although technology via the internet provides Facebook, Zoom, WhatsApp, and other forms of connection, they can help us feel connected in some ways. But what I really yearn is that person-to-person, face-to-face connection with other people. So the question comes up, does God really understand our loneliness? And my answer to that is yes. Think about Jesus on the cross while bearing the burden of our sin. For once the father turned his face away from the son because he could not bear to look on sin. Thus Jesus was compelled to cry out to the father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If, only, if anyone knew loneliness, and isolation, Jesus did on that cross. He doesn't want that for us. Once you repent and trust Jesus as your personal saviour, he ensures you are never alone again. He lives in your heart and you can be conscious of God's presence with you always. In Matthew 28 verse 20, after giving us the great commission to go and preach the gospel to everyone in the world, Jesus says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He's not sending us out on our own. He is with us. God is faithful and he keeps his promises. So let's look at um, what we can learn from King David in Psalm 13 during his time of isolation. He starts out crying out to the Lord. He bears his heart to God in honest desperation, just like Jesus on the cross and in the Garden of Gethsemane. He expresses his feelings to God, feelings of being alone, feeling forgotten and abandoned. There's no pretense, no bravado. This makes us realise that David's relationship with God is real. So, you see, it's okay to struggle. As God's child, struggle is not failure. It's a part of life. But the point is, don't remain there. Don't wallow there in self-pity. As David asks, will you forgive me forever, Lord? My mind goes to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15b for an answer, where God says, Though a mother may forget her suckling child, I will not forget you. That is God's answer to the question then and to that question from you even now. Then when we move into verses 3 and 4, we see that David moves from frustration to prayer. He presses into God for an answer, seeking enlightenment, knowing that by himself he would be crushed and overcome. 
He doesn't want his enemy to be victorious over him. He expresses his fear of failure. I sense humility here. That's a quality we all need. After calling on God, we have to wait for an answer. That is often a tough season for us because we desire distant, uh, instant answers, but we cannot manipulate God. We have to wait on him. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 tells us to discard anxiety, but make our request to God with thanksgiving and allow his peace to guard our hearts. As we truly wait on him, giving him our attention and listening to him through our study of the Bible, we learn so much from God about ourselves and about God. We see God in a new light. God changes our attitude. We, we learn to obey him, to trust him more. Paul was in prison, but he did not sit around doing nothing. He wrote the epistles that we enjoy and which develop us today. He studied the word of God. He utilized his time. Don't let loneliness paralyze you at any point in time. So when David moves on to verses 5 and 6, we see that the beginning of verse 5 signals a change that has taken place within him. His focus is no more on the problem, but now he looks to God. He is now confident in God's unfailing love. He can now rejoice and sing. In the time of waiting, he has obviously contemplated who God is and what he has done for him in the past, thus boosting his confidence and trusting God for the future. God who did this for David and in him wants to do the same thing in your heart and mine. So what can we as Jesus' disciples do for others who are isolated lo or lonely? Well, we can befriend them. We can make them know that God loves them and share the gospel with them. There are some verses that are encouraging to help us when we are lonely. And I'll just share three of them with you. Isaiah 41 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God wants to be right in there with us. And then Psalm 147 verse 3 tells us that he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So these verses are really encouraging and uplifting and help to strengthen us in times of our need. There are a few key, key points I want us to note from this today's message. After a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with someone, let's pray with them at that point. Don't just say, I'll pray for you. Secondly, how can you or myself be God's instrument to make every person in this church feel like they belong, that they are accepted, and most importantly, that they are loved? That's something God wants us to do. Thirdly, simple but effective things like making a phone call, Sending a message or a card to people to check up on them can be very helpful and a, a, quite an antidote to loneliness. Then sometimes people just need a good listener. Can you be that listener? Not necessarily trying to solve a problem, but listen and let people get things off their chest as they talk to you. Many different people are struggling with loneliness and isolation within the church, and it should not be so. Let's help to turn their attention to the Lord and his love for them. Now, even in painful circumstances, 
I want to remind you of three truths. First of all, Jesus stands with us. Next, he strengthens us for whatever task our Father wants us to accomplish until our final breath. And finally, he will enable us to fulfill God's purpose. I pray that you will be comforted, uplifted and encouraged by these promises from the Lord Jesus and that God would use you as an instrument to alleviate loneliness and isolation in the lives of others. As it walks in your heart, so may he walk through you to bless other people. Amen. Thank you, Iabo, and indeed we thank you, Lord, for Iabo's words and those that you've spoken to us through what she said. We just pray that we might live full and rich lives, even in these days, as we seek to love and serve you. Amen. And now we're going to sing our final song for this morning, uh, Your Name. So again, it's talking about Christ's name, but this is uh, you know, another way of saying the cross. You know, the name is that sums up everything about Jesus. So when we sing about his name, we're actually also singing about the cross and all that that represents. So let's sing together.
And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and all those for whom you pray, now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.